So recording has begun. All right, welcome. So a few things here just for housekeeping. Uh, the meetup here is going to be two hours long max. Uh, if we end a little early, that's fine. Uh, Sharon's gonna go through, uh, she has, we, we had a form that was sent out to, get, to gauge the participants and to learn more about everybody that is that has joined. So we will, um, she will be going over some of the questions that were sent in as well. So uh, for all this though, please mute your mic uh, for the most part. And if we do some Q and A, you can speak up at that point and that's fine. And then just note that this is being recorded. So you are aware. All right, so today we're gonna talk about using Elementor Pro with WooCommerce uh, with Sharon Yates. Just some quick housekeeping. We will be using Zoom for this presentation. So you can use the, if you've never used Zoom before, um, you've got the chat box here on the right. I'll be monitoring the questions that come in as Sharon goes. So we may do some check-ins if Sharon wants a little break throughout the presentation to stop and check in with the chat if you want, Sharon, if that works okay for you. And I can uh, monitor those questions for you and, and call them out to you when you're ready. So you can keep those in there. And just remember to stay on mute um, if you're not talking, just to make sure we don't get any background noise as Sharon is presenting. All right. Um, let me do a stop share real quick. And um, when you're ready, Sharon, you can share your screen and I'll begin presenting you as you get that going. Okay, go. All right, so Sharon Yates um, is our presenter today. Sharon is the owner of Creative Mouse Studio and Creative Mouse Academy. Sharon started in the web industry in 1995. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, we can see your screen, good. All right, so um, again, Sharon started in 1995, uh, teaching businessmen and women how to discover the internet. She went on to learn co how to create websites the old school way with lots of hard coding. Her first real job in the website arena was as an ASP, de ASP developer. She continued her education and career journey learning new technologies as they were adopted in the industry. Sharon started freelancing while holding a full-time job in 2005, which is where her education with WordPress began. Her last corporate gig was with AT&T for nine years, working in the trenches as a full stack developer deciding to leave the corporate world. She now works with clients that she likes working with and building customized WooCommerce stores for small businesses. She, uh, just a little bit of background, uh, Sharon is an avid scuba diver. She run, runs a scuba diver club in Dallas where she travels all over the world to awesome scuba diving locations with her two cats, Crystal and Lucy, and that makes up her family where they now reside in Galveston, Texas. So please everybody, Give a warm welcome here to Sharon Yates. Sharon, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike, for uh, inviting me. And thank you, everyone, for letting me speak with you guys tonight. I'm real excited. Uh, wasn't sure what I was going to talk about, but the questions actually helped. So mm -hmm. that helped me gauge where you guys are. Hello. Hello. Okay. I can hear someone talking. Is that right? Or no, you're okay, Sharon. I'll, I'll watch it and make sure everybody's muted. Okay. So you're all okay. good. All right. Um, so uh, let's see. Let me get on. Okay. I don't know what's going on here. I think I froze. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Uh, I think he already did this. So I'm going to move on <laughs> past some of this. And um, so let's start here. Let's see. Let me get my screen out of the way here. Um, so excuse me so what i got out of a lot of the questions that some of you are wanting to do this for your own websites and maybe trying to do them for clients but possibly you haven't set this up for clients yet so i am going to also impart some advice <laughs> along the way uh since you're wanting to start a woocommerce project uh, my first piece of advice is to be a wordpress expert first uh, WooCommerce is a plug-in on top of WordPress, so I definitely think that you need to know WordPress really well um, because you're going to be dealing with the WordPress program plus another plug-in on top of that and then Elementor on top of that. So if you're not really comfortable with WordPress knowing a lot of the back end and um, I'm going to kind of show you a few details of what I'm talking about knowing WordPress and um, I, I just think that people really have to understand that uh, you're not jumping in lightly with WooCommerce. It is a 
a huge, huge project to take on. So um, my next piece of advice, when you do start a WooCommerce project with a client, even if you're doing your own website, ask questions, start asking questions. Um, uh, even if you have clients that you've done WordPress site, I'm sure you know what kind of questions you want to ask them. Well, the same is with a WooCommerce project because it's an e-commerce. It's e-commerce. You're going to be building something that has to work. You have to make sales and these, your clients are going to want to make sales. That's why they're putting this online. And with COVID going on, more and more businesses are looking to go online if they haven't gotten there yet. Uh, so if you don't have a list of questions to ask, we'll start making one. <laughs> um, so I have a list. Uh, I think I started my list way back when I first started, before WooCommerce was out. Um, so we did e-commerce sites and again, hard coding, hand, you know, we did a lot of uh, things before we, WordPress or all these WYSIWYG stuff came along. So I started building my list and the list of questions actually makes you sound more experienced um, because if you're working with a client and you have no idea what to ask them what to get your project scope, uh, then you're not going to sound very experienced to that client and therefore they're probably going to pass you up. So start making a list of questions that you want to ask. I've got a few on here, not, not my whole list, but um, and, and I think I've already said this, e-commerce is not to be taken lightly. Uh, it's a huge business and everyone wants in on it. And everyone, everyone thinks that they can build their own site. And I'm here to tell you that they can't. <laughs> and this is why you get hired if you, if you get your niche. And this is kind of what I did is I, I stayed in the e-commerce niche and that's where um, I, I've been able to kind of create that income for myself. So um, some of my questions are, and obviously first one is, is this a brand new site or an existing site? Because that's going to make a difference, uh, you know, where you're going to lead your questions from there. So that's a good question to start with. Um, and another one, a good one is, where will you be selling? Because it's going to involve language. Do you need multiple languages or is it just going to, you know, are you just shopping with the English? Um, so, and currency. So that's going to make a big difference whether you're selling worldwide or just in your own backyard. <laughs> so, um, next, another good question is what will you be selling? Are you just selling physical goods or digital products, excuse me, digital products or services or events? They're all different and there's going to be different plugins for whatever customization that you need to do. So, this is going to really be important for you to know these these answers and not only knowing the answers but knowing those answers and how you're going to price that because if you get into a project and you don't know that that client has 600 products or or 1200 products based on a on a 18 product site that you did before you're not going to charge the same so you know you've got to get comfortable with being comfortable asking questions uh, is it a subscription or a membership site? That's also important because a lot of people fail to understand what subscriptions or memberships is. Um, another really important one, are you asking the business, are they required to collect taxes? Because a lot of people don't know that they need to collect taxes and especially selling online as well. Because they think, um, I think a lot of people think selling online, oh, I don't need to, you know, collect taxes, but you need to get a tax attorney and find out those answers. Uh, and also going along with where you'll be selling, will you be shipping any products? So these are important questions that you might want to start your list <laughs> if you don't have one. Um, so that should give you a good start. <clears throat> then the next thing I would advise on um, is working with a web host. If again, if the client doesn't even have a website, they're probably going to need help choosing a WooCommerce web host. And I will call it a WooCommerce web host because you're not going to want to get a regular Word 
WordPress shared hosting. This is a big no-no in the WooCommerce industry. So do your research, get out there, find out what kind of uh, businesses offer uh, web hosting for WooCommerce sites. Um, if you're rebuilding a website for a client, get the analytics of, on the previous site traffic because that will help you determine how much um, you know, bandwidth and uh, what type of traffic's coming through that site. So you can kind of help decide or help the client decide where you want to host and what kind of plan you need with that information. That, that's always a good question or a good place to start with if they have an existing site. Um, also, big, big, big thing that I always tell people is make sure you have a staging site. WooCommerce is not a website that you want to work on in the production environment. A lot of us uh, that started building WordPress sites have only just worked with one website. Uh, and this kind of goes back to my days in, in the enterprise industry. Uh, we always had a, a dev environment and a staging environment and a production environment and version control on top of all of that. So if you are used to that type of development, that's a good place to start and um, try to try to set yourself up to where you're building that way so that at least have a staging environment and then a production environment. Um, <laughs> it can be expensive. That would probably be the biggest con um, it's expensive because most of the plugins, especially WooCommerce plugins, don't plan for three different for you having three different environments. So um, when you're trying to figure out a cost uh, to your client and the plugins, you need to be able to calculate that. So um, if you are going to have that, because if you're not, if the client's not paying for those extra expenses, you are. So be sure to um, think about that too. Some of the uh, web hosts that I could recommend is WP Engine, uh, Liquid Web, Pantheon is the one that I use. Um, it is pretty, I'm going to say high end with uh, the enterprise builds. So, so, and, they're, and they're pretty good. I mean, I, I don't really have any complaints. <laughs> and um, Nexus, actually, I just heard about Nexus from uh, the Woo Sesh. Did anybody attend Woo Sesh this week? Uh, so um, they, I looked at them, but I, I don't have a lot of uh, knowledge on them, but they seem to, at least what I saw, they seem to at least fit into the, the WooCommerce arena. Flywheel, which has actually been purchased by WP Engine, so it's kind of the same now. And then I would say on the very low end is SiteGround. Um, I don't think I would host with SiteGround, but if you have to, you know, that's, I think you could find a plan there. And also, um, I think I already said this, don't, don't buy WordPress shared hosting, okay, for a WooCommerce website. Look for something that's called managed WooCommerce hosting, because this is gonna save you a lot of time in late nights. Um, WooCommerce is a transactional app and that needs more resources than a regular WordPress site. Oh, and did I mention do not host with GoDaddy? Do not host with GoDaddy. <laughs> I, I would give you some experiences with that, but I don't think y'all have time to hear all of that. <laughs> but I have picked up clients that were hosted on GoDaddy and it, it's a nightmare sometimes. And I actually just spent the nightmare with GoDaddy this past week. so. I will repeat that, do not host with GoDaddy. Um, so I'm gonna get started with WooCommerce and there's plenty of um, blogs that tell you how to install WooCommerce and get started. Here's a few here, Elementor even has one. Um, uh, I think Kinsta is the hosting company, they have one. Uh, even WooCommerce itself in their docs. In fact, I, I think the WooCommerce docs area is very well documented. They have really great documentation on all of their products. And um, if you're a really, really beginner, wpbeginner.com has some really good blogs on that as well. <clears throat> so those are areas that you can look at. So I'm going to leave the slideshow, uh, excuse me, and 
go on to show you some stuff. Let's see here. And I need need this over here. Okay, so I have a fictional store that I built, my Woo Lab Pro, and um, just a fictional place for me to play around. And you'll notice that I have some products in here already and um, they're all pretty well formatted. They look pretty good. I uh, even have a search that I can do a search for. So this is really cool. And then I have a, a V-neck t-shirt that has some variations. We can choose some colors and size. So these, these are called attributes and variations. So we're going to look at those as well. And uh, this kind of just shows you some of the things that you can do. This has all been done with uh, Elementor and actually a nice new plugin that I found. So I'm going to, to show you some of that. <clears throat> um, uh, obviously, we have a menu and you have some categories. And also, I've kind of got a little demo of, of categories as well over here on the side. <clears throat> so we're going to go to the WordPress back end so we can take a look at that as well. So here's the back end and uh, I'm going to just kind of take you through um, some steps. Um, at, you'll probably start at, if you're a total beginner, you know, following the Direction. Some say, oh, you can set up WordPress in five steps. Some say seven steps. Whichever one you use, doesn't matter. And I've already got WooCommerce installed. We're not going to waste our time going through all that. But um, a lot of people ask themes. They're always curious about what themes do you use in WooCommerce. Well, WooCommerce has several themes of their own. I'm going to kind of show you a baseline, what I would suggest you start with. <clears throat> And my baseline, I always start with, I try to slim down everything where I don't have a lot of junk in there. So I use the Hello Elementor theme. It's a really good base. It's, it's, it's got pretty much nothing. I mean, you would really, you really, if you were just using Hello Elementor, you have to be a very good designer to come out with some good designs. <laughs> so, um, so I start with that, and then I would suggest you look for a WooCommerce theme. One that is really popular is called Storefront. It's it's kind of a it's free, and it's a good thing. And they also have a uh, Power Pack that is called a Storefront Power Pack that they sell. That's an addition um, that has some really cool um, add-ons that you can use. But if you don't know how to use all that, you're wasting your money buying that. I've got this uh, real simple one, it's called e-commerce star. And then on top of that, you also have to remember to do a child theme. So if you're not familiar with child themes, look that up because you don't want to customize all this and then get it overwritten if uh, you're not using a child theme. So that's my base setup. And then, um, so you go in, and I'm just going to show you where the WooCommerce is in the customization area. <clears throat> so a lot of you are probably familiar with this already. Um, we go into the customize area. And if you are already done a lot of your theme options, setting up your logo, uh, your menu, your site identity, your colors, this this one only had one background color. I'm like, wow, man. <laughs> but I didn't buy any pro features. So I was kind of wanting to show you guys what you could do mostly for free. Um, when you start buying a lot of plugins, it gets pretty expensive to build a website. Sorry, my cat's like <laughs> all over my face. Um, but WooCommerce has their own customization here. It's not very much, but you do need to set up a few things in order to get started. Um, you can always turn on the store notice. There's a little store notice that will display if you enable it. 
I'm going to see if it shows up here. I haven't used it. Yeah. So it'll just pop up a little, uh, a little uh, border up there that will show you. I'm going to keep that off so that it won't mess up our header. And then the product catalog. Uh, um, I attended WooSesh this week and they were actually talking about going away from the product catalog, you know, um, being inventive with uh, displaying differently than just using the regular catalog but it is called a product catalog it's just like if you were sitting at home and you know you got the latest uh, what Neiman Marcus catalog or I, I guess there's no Sears anymore I remember the old days of Sears catalog <laughs> but um, so you know it's just like you're browsing through a catalog so they call it a catalog and you're going to need to set up how you're going to show the products there's a drop down you can either show by categories or you can show both products and categories most of the default is to show the products um a category display obviously you're going to show the products i i definitely wouldn't choose anything besides showing the products there and then you can also customize how the products are stored at uh, here you're given a, a few different options here. I always usually just keep the default sorting because I can actually change it um, in some of the uh, element or control areas. And also the products. How many products do you want to display per row? Now this is setting it up per theme. And I'm going to show you something and you're going to say, well, it didn't work. So I changed this to three columns okay i want to just show three columns well so you notice mine is still in four and i'll show you later why it's still in four so excuse me and then once you get through that you have your product images that's the images how they're going to display uh, by default they're set to 600 300 which i find is just perfect you really don't need anything bigger than that um, and you want to leave them, excuse me, at one to one, at one to one ratio. Um, it, the perfect square. So unless you're doing something like maybe art gallery or something like that, that you need a bigger picture, then obviously you want to change that. But um, for most of your products, these are really good sizes. You really don't need to change that. And then you have a checkout page. Uh, you can change some of the settings here of um, like privacy policy, phone, phone field, excuse me, the phone if it's required or company name if it's required. I would say this depends on who you're developing for, you know, if you're, what kind of data they want to collect. And that's the only thing, you know, besides the other regular theme settings here. The other thing that I would tell you is um to use that if you if you are accustomed to using css to style things i have whenever i start a new project i have a, a set skin that i use to kind of um, reset some of the elementary settings so i just load that into here and um, that helps it's I, I keep it in a file and it I, it's the same thing i use unless I need to really customize something, but it's just kind of setting some of the gutters and some of the um, the uh, widths of margins and paddings and stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to jump out of that, and then um, we're going to let's see, review some of the plugins that we added. And again, I did try to just stay since this is not a client site, something that I'm just playing with. So I'm free, I wanna stay with the free stuff. All except for my Elementor Pro, uh, that obviously does cost us something, uh, which I can't imagine, well, I can't imagine doing without the Pro, but I can't imagine right now doing anything without the Pro version <laughs> because I use a lot of Pro stuff. So, um, so very basic, uh, I love using this, this admin menu, menu editor because I'm very anal about keeping organized and I like to organize my admin menu over here. Uh, so that's a plug-in. Um, yeah, I use this child theme generator. 
there is a um a hello child theme but when i'm doing woocommerce sites i don't use that because it tends to um it tends to mess up the theme the woocommerce theme sometimes so i've kind of steered away from that and just use this child theme generator on woocommerce sites uh, there's a uh, um, Elementary custom skin. I actually didn't use any of that. I use, there's another project I'm going to show you that I use that in. It's really good to use. It helps you create your post type skins, and of course, Elementary and Elementary Pro. Uh, granular controls is a is something else that just does a little thing that helps me to move around the menu a little bit. If you don't know about it, I can show you that. And uh, and then obviously I have WooCommerce and uh, I just found this actually last week. It's called WooLenter. Never seen it, saw it and looked at it. I thought, oh, I'm going to actually look at showing this. <laughs> so that's what I chose to show you guys tonight. And actually I found a little glitch, but uh, you can work around it. I've already sent an email to them showing them the glitch. So hopefully they'll fix that. But I think it's a really, it might turn out to be a really good product, especially for beginners. This, I, I think you're going to really love it. And um, I'm going to show you how, what we're going to get some sample data in by using the WordPress importer. And then um, these came with the theme, the yes, <laughs> the yes stuff. And it actually added a couple of items that will help us in our uh, store building. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to know is, um, hey, Mike, am I going too fast? I mean, or, or I should look at, see if there's a show of hands. Am I going too fast? Are you guys catching on? No, I don't think you're going too fast. There, okay. are, there was one question that did come up um, about cropping images, and uh, uh, she asked if you're cropping your image at the one-to-one -one ratio. Yeah, if you do crop images, yes, I would do that. Um, and then actually, someone else also asked about WooLenter um, and had an experience that they they experienced some glitches with it. A anything you can uh, suggest on that? Yeah. Well, like I said, I did find some glitches. I've reported them already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> which, is, which is what I like to do when something doesn't work. <laughs> I'm like, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I don't even know how new it is. I tried to actually look today to see, you know, when they came out. Um, and I couldn't even find that. There wasn't even an about thing on their thing. In fact, the uh, copyright was 2020. So I'm assuming they just came out this year. So, <laughs> um, and I've used a lot of, um, even though I just limited uh, Woo Linter on this project, um, I've, I'm going to show you a real time, real live project that I did using a bunch of other stuff. So, um, so let's just get, this is this really scaled down, simplified WooCommerce thing. In fact, on this site, I didn't put any shipping because I would have to pay for all this stuff. I'm not going <laughs> to. So, but I'll, I do have a site to show you guys your shipping and taxes and um, uh, some integration stuff. So just bear with me. I'll get to it. <laughs> great. Yeah. And I think your, your pace is fine. You're doing great. So um, oh, okay. if you want to check in with me anytime, just let me know. I can let you know what questions are out here. Uh, we can take them at the end as well. So Perfect. whatever works yeah. for you. Yeah, because I'm not looking at that screen over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at my notes. So. so let's see. So next thing, you're going to spend some time which where you actually need to learn is your WooCommerce setup. So um, you need to know the pages that it installs. So let's look at that. Um, fresh from the default. Uh, install it's going to install these pages you're going to get a cart page a check checkout page my account a uh, shop um, you won't get the wish list but that was one that was added through that plugin and I would suggest you also add a thank you page um, a customized thank you page um, we unfortunately I won't have enough time to kind of customize that for you because there's lots of things that you can do with the thank you page to kind of um, increase sales, you know, kind of get them to come back and buy again. So that could be a whole new, whole topic <laughs> on how to 
you know, how to increase sales or something like that. But thank you pages are really good. Okay, so then, um, then you want to head over to the WooCommerce settings. So that's going to be the next area that you're going to need to set up after you've done all your customization. Uh, and that customization was just your, for your theme, you know, not really for WooCommerce and stuff. That was just setting up your theme stuff. And so WooCommerce, uh, you have to set up some general information, uh, obviously an address. Where, where are you? And also, um, even if you're just selling online, you still need address, especially if you're shipping products, because they're going to, um, your shipping is going to need to start from somewhere. So you have to set up your address get that stuff in there. Um, also, the options, if you're selling to other countries, uh, you can obviously sell to specific countries or sell to all countries except, you know, so there's, you can set that up however you, excuse me, want to start. And then um, shipping as well. You've got your selling location, shipping locations, and your default uh, customer location, which is, why you have your address in there. <laughs> um, uh, you do want, probably want to enable your tax rates and calculations. Um, there's a WooCommerce has a plugin called WooCommerce Services. It's free. Most of, there's some plugins that are free. Most of them cost money. And, uh, but uh, your WooCommerce ser service is free. And I'll, let me backtrack a little bit. When you install WooCommerce, one of the things that, and I, I bypassed it on this one just because I wanted to keep everything simple. But one of the things that it wants to install is called Jetpack. And Jetpack comes with WooCommerce services. In fact, you'll set up the taxes and uh, shipping through that. But what, it, but what Jetpack does, it connects you, it wants you to create a wordpress.com account which you can't bypass that you have to that's how you connect that in your WooCommerce so uh, once you install a uh, jetpack it's going to have you create that wordpress.com uh, account and that account connects you to your WooCommerce.com account you can't bypass that that's what you need to actually connect everything so um, and again I just wanted to keep things simple. I didn't want to confuse everybody with all that stuff, but I, I do want you to be more, be aware when you see what's Jetpack. Personally, I don't like Jetpack. It does provide some good things. Um, I, don't, I guess for me, I don't like being told you need this. <laughs> you can use it for free. There is, a, there is a free version, but you don't see that right away. You actually have to scroll down and in very tiny print say no thanks I just want the free version <laughs> so um but they do sell a subscription version which actually helps you with shipping costs so that depends on if you're going to do some shipping and use a um, product that they connect WooCommerce to uh, let's see as you can see you have several tabs here um oh I made a change so we want to make sure we save so make sure we save our changes and you have several tabs to go through and we're going to look at the products on here so this is going to be really simple and then i'm going to jump to a to a real live one to show you some other settings so um under products you're going to set up obviously you have that shop page that we noticed that's your base page and then um <clears throat> you have some options to uh redirect to cart page after a successful edition. These are um, usability things that you want to think about. You know, do you really want to have a cart pop up after you add it or do you want them to keep shopping? So you have to think about, you know, when you're checking these boxes, do you really want that action to happen? So I'm going to uncheck that one, but I do want to enable Ajax because that's actually really cool. Uh, the placeholder, that's a default thing. You don't need to change these. Of course, I am probably using, let's see, pounds and inches. I don't think I, I'm using kilograms. <laughs> um, 
also, are you are you going to ask for product reviews? Product reviews help you sell more. If you get more positive product reviews, obviously you want to collect those. So I would keep those checked. All of these star ratings and things like that. Keep those checked. Help sell things on your on your site. If you're going to uh, keep track of inventory, you want to visit this page. You want to enable your stock management here. Make some settings here. And also, if you're selling downloadable products, uh, there's some settings for that. Um, so, taxes and shipping. I am going to jump over to a product project that I did. And, oh, oh, oh wrong, wrong buttons. Hopefully, I won't do that. Now, um, again, it's going to depend on what kind of business you're doing and what you get from your tax attorney. Uh, again, if you're setting up for a client, the client's going to have to give you this information. If you're doing it for your own business, you need to know, you know what, what you're going to do. Uh, we set this up because we use WooCommerce services, and uh, this is pretty basic settings here. Uh, you can set your standard rate. And you only need to set, like this one, we just set it up for where they were located. The services will calculate it everywhere else. So we didn't have to set anything else up. Now shipping, um, shipping can either be easy or complicated. For this company, it was very complicated. <laughs> um, so they, we had a lot of rules. Uh, they have, uh, free shipping for everything up to, I think it was 60, 60 or 80 pounds, I can't remember. So all of this is done by weight because it's the kiln company, you know, kiln like ceramics, you know, you eat those, <laughs> get the beautiful bowl. Um, so they have uh, FedEx shipping, they have accounts set up with FedEx and UPS, and then they also allow their customers to select whether they want to use their own shipping, shipper account as well. So that's a lot to deal with and if you'll notice here we set up zones this first thing you have to do is set up shipping zones and um, so this one what we did is we set up the continental united states because anything outside of that like alaska and hawaii is more expensive so you want to set different rates for that shipping can get really co complex so make sure you understand how to set this up in then you have shipping methods. You have to set up your FedEx and, and then your own shipper account. You have to set those up. So these are just things that you have to understand and work through and just figure it out as you go because <laughs> it is not, oh, well, actually WooCommerce, again, like I said, their documentation is really good. So if you need something that gives you step-by-step, -step, WooCommerce has a shipping, um, uh, Actually, they have a shipping plugin uh, that you can use, and I think that's actually what I used here. I use, I use, I try to use as much WooCommerce products as I can, unless I just don't like them. And um, so here, I use a lot. Um, well, FedEx, yes, I use the WooCommerce FedEx plugin. We use a uh, a tree table rate, which was not from WooCommerce. I think that was from a third party, uh, but most of them were through WooCommerce. And then you also need to set up payments. Um, if you're going to accept payments through Stripe or PayPal or um, or do you have a merchant? This one is set up through a merchant. It's what Paytrace is called. Um, they have, you know, you're going to see all kinds of merchant gateways that you get. There's you know, banking if you're doing it through your bank or whatever. So you have to get a specific plug-in for however you're accepting payments. For uh, small businesses or like a business, my own business, I just use Stripe. I use Stripe. It's very convenient. I don't use PayPal anymore. Uh, I just didn't like how PayPal did their, uh, I forgot why I quit using PayPal. <laughs> It was either their fees or something. I just found it easier to use Stripe. Uh, my, I had more complaints with people using PayPal than I did with Stripe. So I just 
took PayPal completely off and went through Stripe. And now I love Stripe because it goes straight to my bank. I can, I can get money the same day to go to my bank the same day. So I love Stripe. Um, and I also some businesses do purchase orders and also, um, there's a lot of details depending on how the customer again questions ask those questions but how customers are going to set this up because not everyone on this particular company uses or can't are allowed to use a purchase order they have to be a distributor with them so um, there was some customization and when they get to a checkout are they a distributor or are they just a regular customer so these are things that you know you have to plan for and you have to get out of the uh, client to know how you're going to set all this up. Sorry, I got a little gnat. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's all I'm going to show you here. Um, can I also show you the emails? You don't want to spend a lot of time here, but you can customize every email in here. Um, I, I would say besides besides uh, putting your logo on it and um, you know, checking the content, obviously, but also setting up who the mail is going to go to. So a lot of times, uh, typically, your customer is going to want it to go to specific places. We're still, let's see, how, how long were, I think, uh, well, I started working on this site in March. They started with over 600 products, and we're still importing They've got thousands of products that we don't, we're not even done with this website yet. So that's why you see my name on, on receiving some of this information because I just want to see if things are working smoothly and going as well as how we expect it to go. So once, once everything is all smoothed out, I'll probably remove my name from receiving because I don't need all that mail in my mailbox. <laughs> but um, so you see that. Um, you don't need to worry about integration, but the advanced tab is one more thing that you need to look at because this is where you tell, uh, you, you see the pages that were installed. These automatically are inserted here, but if you change that, then you need to come back here to change those pages. Okay, well, I'm not, I'm not calling it card anymore. I called it, you know, called it something else. So if you change this, this is where you need to come back and make sure you're pointing these pages so that WooCommerce knows where to send your customers. Um, there's also uh, what we call endpoints. This is where uh, you, I would say you're an advanced user if you're starting to work with endpoints. So I'm not even gonna go through that with you, but you do need to be aware of these when you start to get to a lot of customization. Let's see, I think that's all. But, oh, um, when you're doing integration with third parties, which is what we did here, uh, you're going to need to use the REST API. Uh, sometimes you have to use SOAP services, and uh, sometimes you'll get the API from the third party. This, we're using both. So I had to set up a SOAP web service, and Global Shop Solutions is what they use for their inventory at the company location. So we're taking everything from their on-site company, what if you want to call it a database, uh, their CRM, their customers, everything is in Global Shop Solutions. So we worked with Global Shop Solutions to build the API to bring everything in here. So I'm going to show you how to get sample data using a different way, but integration with a third party is definitely you're going to want to use an API and so you might have to learn how to work with that as well. <clears throat> okay, I think that's all on this side that I want to show you. Let me go back to my fit my little fiction one. <laughs> and let's see, what are we going? To, okay, next thing we're going to look at is Elementor. There's one little thing now that we have um, our WooCommerce set up we want to tell Elementor one thing. And when you install WooCommerce, it's going to add a product in your post types. So you wanna make sure you check your products so that 
you can actually set up those pages using Elementor. Otherwise, you're, if you try to go into one of those pages and use Elementor, it's going to say, it's going to fail. You're going to get that screen that says can't load or whatever. You know, I'm sure you've gotten that before. You know, go back, <laughs> learn more. It's going to do that because you didn't check this box. This box has to be checked in order for you to be able to work with those pages in Elementor. All right. So now we need some products to work with. Um, excuse me, WooCommerce, I was going to say Elementor. WooCommerce actually has some dummy content. And so that's kind of the content you saw that I have. But you got to know where to find it. Now you can find it on just do a search for dummy content on the website. But when you install when you install WooCommerce, it also comes with WooCommerce. So let me show you how to find that. <clears throat> so if you have access to a cPanel, you're just going to go to your file manager or you could do this through FTP. Um, but this is why I say you need to be a WordPress expert because if you're not familiar with the WordPress file system, you're going to have a hard time finding things. So as we all know, um, WP content is where all of our plugins and themes are. So we're going to go to um, the public HTML and WP content and we're going to jump into the plugins. And then of course we're going to look for WooCommerce. And you see there's a folder in WooCommerce called sample data. And it actually provides you with three files. Uh, two of them are for products. One's a CX CSV file format and the other is an XML. And then you have some sample ta tax rates. If you want to play with taxes, a good way to do it. <laughs> um, I, the, we're going to use the XML file. So you can download that from here. Excuse me, I've already got mine downloaded, so I'm not going to do it. But this is where you would find it and you would just download it. Okay. You need to get out of this because I've already got that. And then the plugin that I use, I think I showed you guys what we loaded. And that's going to, you're just going to go to your tools and import. Now, the products also has a product import, but it's for CSV. So, like I said, you can you can download that CSV file or XML. I chose XML because I don't know. I know that format and I deal with it. So, <clears throat> all you have to do is go to your tools and run the importer. Also, you'll see that WooCommerce has the CSV file file. Excuse me, the CSV file. It's the same one that's under that product, but don't use that if you didn't download the CSV. So you're going to do that, run importer, and you're going to choose the file, and you're going to choose the sample products. I'm not going to import it because I've already got those in here, so I don't want to do that twice. So we have our products. Voila! All of a sudden, you've got, you've got data. So you've got products here now, and uh, I'm just going to show you you can kind of clean this up a little bit. You have uh, this little, the little screen options here. Choose what you want to see here. Um, don't use tags, so I'm just going to turn that off. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to leave everything else the way that it was. So let's see. There's another thing that we have under products, and it's called categories. It is really essential that your products have categories. I'm sure all of you have probably shopped online and you, you say men's clothing or men's watches or women's uh, shoes. So you wanna make sure you categorize your products. Um, I always see this a lot. I see a lot of people have uncategorized. In fact, you can actually rename this. I would never leave anything left uncategorized. I usually, this is the first thing I just come in and I usually just rename this because I don't want to leave it uncategorized. Um, let's see, I forget what we don't have. So we've got hats, we've got 
Uh, I don't know. Let's just say, uh, I know we don't have shoes. <laughs> and you just give it a slug. You don't really need, if you have a pitcher, yeah, let's, let's get a pitcher, which we don't have shoes, but uh, I don't know. Let's just pick a pitcher <laughs> so that we have something there. And then update that. So a lot of people, you can't get rid of it, but you can rename it. So that's how you actually get rid of it, is by renaming it. Um, so I would definitely, if you, if you have a list categorized, just rename that your first one so that you don't leave that in there. I can't tell you how many, people, how many sites I've been on that I see, I still see the uncategorized. Same with your posts, you know, your blog posts. I see a lot of blog posts that are labeled uncategorized. <laughs> So don't ever leave your items uncategorized. Okay, let's see. Um, so let's just take a look at a product and I'm actually gonna pick two separate ones, let me see. So you notice that we have some products that just have a single price and then we also have products that you know have a price range. The products that have a price range are called your variable products. And products with just one price are usually called simple products. And um, you can tell the difference by, let's just look at a polo, I think, yeah. <clears throat> so this is what your product screen is gonna look like. You're gonna have a product name, have a description, and then a lot of your product data is gonna be right here, this, this area. And you notice that this one does say it's a simple product. Uh, if you're just doing products that you're selling online, you would want to check the virtual box. If you're doing stuff like software that's downloadable, definitely want to check the downloadable box. Um, so you can, this is where also where you set the product data, your regular price, your sell price. Some of them you see how sell price is here. You set the tax, you know, if there's taxable, if it's not, and also classes. Inventory, if you have if you have your inventory um, turned on, this is also where you want to control it. You can also help your shipping by putting your weight and your dimensions in here. And uh, linked products is for things you want to upsell. So this is really, a, I think, an area that a lot of people don't look at. This is where you do upsells and cross-sells. So you can link to other products that you might want to um, try to sell. It's kind of like, uh, let's say I bought an umbrella. Well, with an umbrella, I probably would want some galoshes or you know a raincoat or something. So you know, try to sell like items or you know upsell like items. Now, your attributes are things like your color and your sizes. And if you look over in pro on the menu side, you have a place for attributes. This is where you actually build them. And don't worry, if you don't build them here, you can build them right there where the product is. But you can, you usually with your, if you build it over here, you can define everything at once. So it's a lot easier if you do do it here. So this is where you set up your attributes. Like if you're doing color or sizes, there's different things that you need. Um, go back to my polo. And if you go to attributes here, let's see what they, so they are actually using the color attribute. And they, you just get it from doing the drop down here and you choose the alt color and you add that. So now this actually has one variable, but it, it's not using all the different colors. It's only one. So it still remains a simple product. And uh, that, attributes and variations sometimes confuse people and it is confusing if you have a lot of things going on like in that other side I'm going to show you some that gets really complicated sometimes uh, let's see most of the time you don't need to worry about these items but they depending on um, what plugins you have you're not going to have these like the product badge 
the Wu Linter, those were added by Wu Linter. Um, so normally everything stops at the advanced tab. Um, so it just depends on what plugins you have installed and what they're going to add. Then over here on your right side, you've got your, this is what I call your core things that you want to look at, your product categories. Notice that now our uncategorized is gone. So you want to make sure that you use that so that it helps with your categories and your search features. It helps all that. I don't see a lot of people using tags and products. Sometimes I do, but if you want to use tags, that's you want to start doing them there. Um, for products, for what we're doing with Elementor, you're not going to have to worry about a template here unless you are using uh, anywhere Elementor. And I'm actually going to show you that as well. <laughs> Okay, and then you have a product image. You can uh, choose a feature product image. And if you have more than one image, that's where your product gallery comes in. So I'm sure you've probably seen products that have like three or four images. That's what the gallery is. It's good. You would actually, you know, pick how, well, excuse me. I want to pick more than one. So I've just picked all three of those. And if I just choose add to gallery, now I've got those three added to my one featured image. Yeah, so we actually remove those. Probably don't want them to show up on a polo shirt. <laughs> Let's update that. Okay, so that, and then there was one more. I wanted to show you how a real variation works, and that's going to be down here. So again, now we're getting to where, notice that we have more than one color, and of course, you have more than one size. So when you, you have to set the attribute before you can set the variation. So once you get your attribute set, then you come down to variation. And notice now that I'm a variable product. I'm no longer a simple product. So once I get my attribute set, then I come here and I actually, excuse me, I would create variations from all attributes. So every, the attributes that I have there, then I want to create these variations. And it's actually, once I hit go, it's going to create the different ones. So you notice that it's created the blue. And then you can come and put the, the information you need, like this needed to skew the regular price, if there's a sale price, stock items. You know, again, if you're doing shipping, you might want to have these filled out. Um, so you just click on them to expand it, get, and also the image, you can set your image for each, like, you know, colors that you have. Notice this has a blue one. So this is where your variations are set. Okay, let's see. Now, so let's look at a real world. This is going to, I hope it doesn't go too slow, but okay, where's my products? I was going to say, this might be a little slow because, like I said, it's got over 600, let's see, we're at 643. So we've got a lot of, actually 667 items in here. So it takes a while to load that many. So you gotta make sure you have the server that you can load that stuff. <laughs> and actually we're gonna go to this product. So, um, I don't think, what did I wanna show you here? I think all I did was, all I wanted to show you was just had a variation set up in here, but I think they removed it. And again, it's it's fetching all this stuff because remember that we're integrated and uh, we have a lot of stuff in here. Karen, while you wait for that to load, do you want to answer a couple questions that we got in the chat box? Sure. 
Okay, great. Um, a few questions here. One from uh, Maureen. Uh, to simplify shipping, would you consider adding shipping to the product costs and basically ship free? Mm. Is that something you would do? Uh, I guess you could do that to work around it, but do you always know how much your shipping is going to cost? That's what you've got to figure out. You know, where are you shipping to? Are you only shipping to the U.S. or, you know, are you shipping overseas? The costs are not going to be the same. So you've got to figure out how, how are you going to variate your price based on what the shipping is going to cost. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I can remember selling things on eBay and, and dealing with that. So, yeah, I could, I could relate to that. Okay, yeah. good. Um, and Maureen also asked if, if she could see some of the plugins you use on the live site. I think that's kind of what you'll be showing here. So, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, a few more here. Uh, let's see. Have you used a quote plugin? And that's again for Maureen. Quote uh, no, no, but I almost use it for this live site. Um, but I, and uh, I'm going to show you how I got around that. So, so um, because again, it's based on what your customer requirements are. So I could have used that quote plugin, but based on what they needed, I ended up using uh, for, uh, Gravity Forms. And again, I'll show you. I have that kind of in my advanced area. So um, just again, just asking questions. You know, is your customer going to need a quote? Yeah, but. But no, I haven't used it yet. <laughs> okay, got it. Cool. Um, do you want me to give you a few more? There's a few more out there. Or do you want me to hold them till the till later on? Um. Uh. Let's see. Am I staying on time? Let's see. Seven four. What? When are we ending? <laughs> uh, eight thirty is the okay. is the target endpoint. And if you want to go a little longer, that's fine with me. People can drop off. I've got a recording, so oh, they okay. can watch again later um, if needed. But up okay. to you. Um, I'm yeah. We, go ahead and ask a couple more, and then I'll. Okay, great. The next one is, have you used the geolocation API integration, um, MaxMind? No, um, mainly because I haven't had a project to do that in. Um, it may be in this one because uh, my next thing that I'm setting up is um, their um, kiln technicians, uh, where to find them. So I'm going to be building a directory for that, uh, and that will probably be using geolocation. But at the at where we are in the project right now, no, I haven't used that. Okay, good. Uh, the next question I had was from again from Maureen. Do you recommend customers sign in before purchase or purchase as a guest? Ah, so that's a good question. And again, it's going to depend on your client or you. You know how you're building. So originally, this one that we're looking at, uh, we started out uh, because they already had a, a, a customer list. They already had a customer list when I built this for them. So we imported all their customers from their CRM. So we had to try to figure out a way to get their customers to log in with their existing email address. And um, the only way we could do that was to prevent them from checking out with the, um, they had to log in before they checked out. <laughs> okay. So, so, you know, it, it just depends. Um, like if I'm going to Neiman Marcus, why would I want to log in if I'm just looking around and then I want to check out definitely if I'm checking out, then I'll probably log in. But, um, you know, it, again, it's just going to depend on your circumstances and, and what your customer or your client wants to achieve. Um, we, the, this client here, um, they, there's so much customization in this project. I can't, I mean, I had to start keeping a document. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, in fact, that document goes to them after we're through the project, but because there, there's so much that you have to keep up with and understand, you know, well, why'd you do this? And nobody's going to be able to come along and sit here and say, well, God, what is that? You know, why, why'd you do that? 
because it's, it's very convoluted with this this one. I mean, we're like I said, we're not even done yet. We started with 600 products, but they've got much, much more to go. And we're trying to hit the Christmas, um, uh, trying to, by the end of the year, trying to have all of their products. But they have so many. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, and then, uh, I can give you one more and we've yeah. got a few more after that, but we'll save those for a little bit later so you can get back to it. Um, Charles asked if you could go back to the REST, uh, explaining the REST API and what it's for. Oh, well, what it's for is for third party integration. Uh, so let's see. So, so you saw how uh, you could import the dummy data from an XML file. Well, in that import, you notice that we only had like 18 products. So that's not, that's a small file. That's, you know, not going to take any time. But this company, they, like I said, they had their products already on a system called Go Global Shop System, and we just call it GSS for short. Um, so you don't want to, don't want to duplicate everything that they've got in the shop on a website. You want to integrate that so that when a purchase is made on the website, it's also going back to the shop. So, so it, it's communicating. Every time somebody makes a purchase here on the website, it goes straight to their, it goes the way that we worked everything out because it gives an indication in their email and then that order goes into their system. So everything is tied together. The inventory, I don't have to, you'll notice that on most of their products, you don't see in inventory, the one we're looking at does because they, it's on sale. So we did have a stock on this one, but um, you'll notice that. So all of their products say that they're in stock, but they're not really using an inventory management system. But when you get down to some of these items, the reason why they say they're on back order is because they only build them when they're ordered. So um, it just depends on, and you'll notice this one that we were looking at, we did put an inventory management on it because they, it's on sale and they were trying to, you know, discontinue that version of the kiln. So they only have two left. So now they're trying to get rid of that so that they can do new, new stock. So um, it just depends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. I think that's a good answer. Yeah. The, the back order is cool. It's uh, for that just in time inventory, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we've got a few more, but we'll, we'll save those for a little bit. Let you get back to it here. So uh, okay. there's again. I see somebody, Kathy asked what ballpark could I give a potential client for the price and time to do? Uh, see, that's why you have to ask questions. I didn't read the rest of it, but that's why you have to ask questions because this project I'm working on is a huge project. Some projects are going to be small and 18, and 18 um, product versus a thousand products is way different and also is going to have different criteria. Um, certainly, I would not advise you to give an 18 product price to a thousand product. Um, in fact, I would say, I, for me, me personally, I don't even start a WooCommerce project unless it starts at $10,000. Um, and a $10,000 WooCommerce project is probably going to be like uh, 50 products or more. And um, time-wise, it's just going to depend on what, how much customization you have to do. Um, and how well you know WooCommerce because if you don't know it that well and you're learning as you go it's going to take you longer longer to build it um, longer to understand it um, you've got to wrap your head around a lot of different parts and uh, like I said it's it's something not to be taken lightly it's definitely it's definitely a serious niche and you've got to be a good problem solver if you run run into issues, <laughs> I will see what this what your rest of your thing. I know the actual cost and how it depends on the yeah complexity and amount of inventory. People often yeah 
people often ask for a ballpark when they are considering a site. That's the problem. <laughs> because here's the thing, you know, uh, I, I, you know, lo I love to socialize. Of course, it's harder to do now with COVID. But before COVID, I love to socialize because I, I worked from home and my social life was my getting out time. And, you know, people, when I met new people and they asked, what do you do? And of course, I tell them what I do. Oh, how much will a website cost me? <laughs> That's always what they ask. How much will a website cost me? I'm sure you guys run into the same thing too. But um, I tell them, well, it depends. It depends on what you want. And most people don't know what they want. They just know, oh, I just want a simple website. <laughs> well, what's a simple website? You know, you've got to get all of that. You've got to have the questions to get all of that out of them. And it's not a happy hour <laughs> type conversation. To have. Yeah, I, I agree, Sharon. I think, um, I think making sure you have some questions up front for the client to learn more about what they want. And one of those questions being, what's your budget? What, what are you willing to spend? And yeah. then, you know, you, you know they can, it can be 1000 it can be 10000 um, Obviously, if it's 1000 well... <laughs> Uh, they might want to go Wix or, or something like that because that's uh, yeah. you know, it's WooCommerce is building a WooCommerce site like you said you know for you is at least ten thousand I would agree that's because yeah. it's it's not you know a simple yeah. site it's not and and uh, you know and even if it, it even if it's eighteen products I would probably still say ten thousand dollars because you're spending time building something that you want to work and they want to work and. And they've got to be serious about it too. They've got to have the budget and they've got to, um, you know, of course, spend marketing. So it's not just, oh, I want to put up an e-commerce site. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's something that I'm very serious about. And I'm, that's why I like doing what I do because now I can pick and choose who I want to work with. And asking those questions helps you pick the right clients to work with too. So. Agreed. Absolutely. Okay. So what I wanted to show you on the professional side is you'll notice that there's a whole lot more in their products. So we've got a product here and <laughs> probably doesn't make sense to anybody because it's only for people that know kilns, <laughs> but they've got a product called GL24. It's a kiln type. Um, and here's a picture of it right here. <laughs> it's what that kiln looks like. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but you'll notice that after the regular product information that there's a whole lot more and this was actually what i customized for it all of this data was coming we're talking about the api somebody had a question about the api so this all this data here was coming from the api so i had to have a way to capture it and um so these are called custom fields so I built those custom fields using a plugin called Pods. Now you've probably heard of ACF, Advanced Custom Fields. You can do that with this. Excuse me, I keep. I've only had lunch today, and I'm still. <laughs> anyway, um, I like using Pods. Um, I've used Advanced Custom Fields, but I prefer using Pods. Don't ask me why, because I still haven't figured that out. I just, Podge just seems a lot more intuitive for me. And also, um, I found that I could just build things just like that using Pods. In fact, so you notice here, here's my product. It, that was the, um, the section that I showed you. I just called it product. And you'll notice that I have 63 fields in it. That's how many fields I had to capture with that integration. So, so when that API is being used, they're giving me, it's kind of like that XML file. They're giving me all the data that goes with that pro product, but I've got to be able to store it somewhere. And if I don't have those uh, custom fields there, there's the product information isn't going to be there. So like this again, you have to pull out of your customer. Um, if you don't ask them the right questions, well, you know, what kind of products do you have? And they'll probably say, oh, I just have this. But you don't know what kind of data, you know, am I going to have to collect special data? What, you know, is it just going to be? Nothing is, is always that simple. Oh, I'm just going to drop it in. <laughs> so I had to work with the uh, Global Shop guy. Um, and by the way, 
they this company had um, someone else develop this for two for two years. They were under development, and nothing got done. But the first run through they did with this integration, apparently the whoever they had working on this project. When I came along and took over the project, you know, I looked at what they did and stuff, and I trashed the whole system because it was done wrong. It was done incorrectly. Um, the, whoever was the web developer really didn't even make compensate for the custom post type at all. So, so the data wasn't going anywhere. But they said, "Oh, we got a successful product." I'm like, no, you don't. You don't even have even the customers weren't even imported correctly. So um, I told them, you know, it's better if I just start from scratch, and that way I can build it the way that because I was I really felt uncomfortable taking over what was there. It it was just a mess. Um, so again, if you're uh, if you're taking over a project too, that's there's special questions for that, and I can't even go into that. <laughs> um, so anyway, so built this this uh, custom post type, and uh, I'll just go in there for real quick to show you again, real quick. <laughs> I, I found out that this, this host on Pantheon, and it's actually going quickly. It's just I I'm impatient. <laughs> so you see that. Uh, all of the fields that I have, most all of them are plain text because uh, most of them didn't have any relationships or anything that I had to worry about because they were just one on ones. Um, but you see how simple it is. Uh, I just come here, set up the label, the name, and um, if there if there is something that I have to, you know, do, it's not really that hard. This this is really simple to set up. You just set the fields up, what you need, and um, and again, I, I just love pods, but anyway. So, I'm sorry, I don't want to, because, all right. So I think I'm done here, and uh, yeah, oh wait, no. I'm, not, I'm gonna go one more place. So, yeah, I'm done there. So let's actually create a page. <laughs> I know y'all are probably wondering, okay, I saw all that, now where's the page? So, um, so we, we are going, you know, with Elementor Pro, obviously we have a templates area. And if you've used Elementor Pro, and working with templates i hope that you know how to create a header because i've already done that here i've got my header done i haven't done a footer but i've done a header and um i've used it and have it set where it's the global header and the only reason why i didn't keep the um default header was because I wanted to add a certain element to the header. And also I didn't need everything that was in the default one. So, so really quickly, I've got, this is tied back to the site logo and this is the drop in menu and a search box. And really this was built in the menus area. So all you do is select the um, nav menu, drop it in. Uh, I, this is also built in the menu area, but actually I, I ended up using a list here, I think, or did I do it? Yeah, ended up doing a list here. So I, all you have to do is just tie the links back to the pages that you want. Uh, this is the wish list page and uh, cart. So those are same things, same pages that are on um, the WooCommerce pages. So let's look at how to do the shop page, right? So when you come, when you are in <clears throat> the theme builder, some extra pages are added 
for the WooCommerce area, and you're going to see the single product page, single product tab, and a products archive tab. So those are the two ones that are actually added. The um, the Elementor custom skin is going to add this loop tab. Um, that's where you use the custom skin to do like a product um, a product skin if you want to. The shop page and your categories are called archives. So that's what you're going to use here. And I'm just going to show you what I already did. And then we're going to get rid of that and show you how simple it is to use Elementor Pro to build a shop page. So you notice that I have a section here and it's got a nice little shop by category, a little banner, and then our products. So we're going to delete this and delete this. And I have that thing. But when um, these are in Elementor Pro, you get the product archive because I'm on an archive page. So you're going to see the widgets for a product archive in the widgets area. And you're also going to see the WooCommerce items there as well. So those come with Elementor Pro. WooLenter, and I bought the Pro version of WooLenter because, <clears throat> because it added other, it added the other pages like the cart and the um, checkout and the thank you and the wish list. So I thought, well, let me check this out. And so I bought that. And you'll see that um, well, it shows these are the pro widgets, and then these are the regular widgets. So, so you'll see that in the Woo Enter. Um, so, what I am going to do here, I have to go back out, but because I want to show you the Woo Enter templates that I'm actually going to use to build this. So WooLenter adds a little menu as well, <clears throat> and it has a template library. <clears throat> and in the template library, you see that it has an Elementor specific templates, and you get all of these. Now, the, the free version has the same templates, but you don't get all of them, the pro versions. Like if I go in, to the shop, <clears throat> it'll tell, I think it tells you which one, uh, even if, well, if you just in the free version, it'll tell you, I think you only get like one or two of the shop layouts and then the rest of them are under the pro. So you'll notice how many, how many, ver or how many different shop pages I can, can use. But what I'm going to do, there was something that I wanted to, oh, it was the home. So I want to actually use one of these home pages for my shop page. I'm like, oh wow, look at all this. Woo. And of course I love pink and I'm like, oh wow, but this doesn't really fit my thing. <laughs> so I'm not gonna use that one. In fact, I'm gonna go back up and I think I was going to use this one. So, so now that I've decided that I wanna use this one, um, and I can't say the preview works because I think that was one of the glitch one of the glitches yeah look this is the preview i get i'm like no i don't want that <laughs> so preview doesn't work <laughs> but i can see enough of it and so i'm going to import this this is another glitch that i found look at that so i had to actually come here and like what 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 is it and i finally got to see some text so it says import to your library <laughs> so that's definitely something you want to do and I'm sure you don't want to sit here and figure out every one of these. So I've already reported that glitch. <laughs> so it's, it's actually imported now. The other glitch that I found is that if I've already set my global colors, you know, the new elementary style guide, sometimes, it didn't do it all the time, and I'm going to see if it's done it this time, it will wipe out my colors. And I got so pissed. Oh my God. So yeah, there's a few glitches. But 
if you can deal with all that, this is what we get. If we go back to templates and we look at our saved template. So you'll see that now it's here. And actually, I'm going to view it to see if it's really there. Oh, good. So it came in. So, so look how fast I created a page, but I'm not really done with that because it's not in a page yet. So I'm going to go back to my theme builder and my shop archive page. And then I'm going to go back to my templates. And here's that home page three. And I'm just going to do insert. And look, oh, this is another thing about Elementor that's been bugging me. It does this a lot. And see how I lost my, my menu? And I find that I have to go back here and make sure. See, it turned into Elementor Canvas, but I want it to go back to full width. See, that's, that's something that's been bugging me. This has been bugging me a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's just pissed me off because now my menu is gone. But my menu is still there. It just I don't know what what they've been. Should be a problem if you just like preview it real quick and then it comes comes back, right? Yeah, it'll um it'll come back. Like if I close it and. I mean that's what I have to do to it. I hate it. Yeah, it's just so yeah. I haven't. That's the other thing. If I view live page without updating but I have a another browser running so I'm just gonna see I did save that so let's update this and see what we got look yeah. I got a whole new website <laughs> so assuming that obviously I'm gonna do something else you know to this but notice how I've, I've got some products on there with some you know nice little ads screen ads and stuff so it could be a really great product <laughs> if they fix the little bugs that's in there so i'm going to leave that one as it is because i want to kind of show you um the normally you can't change um the um uh, Car, the carts are the checkout pages, but with this product, you actually can. And I was so excited. So um, I've already created a single product page. So again, I'm just gonna show it to you because basically I did the same thing. I just picked, a, picked one of the things that I liked, pulled it in, and uh, so I'm gonna leave that. And I wanna spend time showing you how we can actually so work on the pages that we normally don't get to change. And uh, you don't do that in here in the Elementor theme builder. You actually go to the page to do that. So let's go and actually I'm gonna do the checkout page because that's usually the, the worst one because <laughs> the cart page, it's just real easy. But the checkout page, you normally, get the checkout and I think let's just see. Um, so when you go to these pages, you're gonna see a short code in there and uh, you can leave it here. It's not hurting anything, but what you wanna do in your template is make sure your template is set to either the full width. You definitely don't want canvas if you want your header and footer to show up, but make sure you have your full width or you know whichever one you're using. And then we're going to go in, into Elementor. Ah, see, we got that. Now, we should get that because, and, and actually, I'm going to show you how to defeat this. So, not a big deal.
Okay, so now remember, I deleted the checkout page and created a new one. So where do I need to go to make sure my new page is in the setup? So I have to go back to my WooCommerce setup and make sure that page shows up. So we'll do that after we're finished here. Um, so how do I get the checkout back? So the nice thing is I'm just going to add a section here and I am going to just put, see, wait, I don't want, do I want this to be, no, I don't want this to be full width, but just do some padding. It's kind of like my default settings that I do. And then, let's go. See, this is a checkout, so I actually want two columns. So they've actually divided up. Oops, I got to do one more thing. Forgot. Crap. I don't know if y'all do this either, but I usually name my sections so that they're easier to work with. Oh, uh, wait, do I want that? I just want to in there, yeah. Yeah. So my styles look like they stayed, which is good. Yay. Um, so get back over here. So now I have just the billing form and I actually can, um, work on, on this or, um, I think, what did I find out about this? Um, I really like how everything is, but if I wanted to, to actually change some things, I think, um, I think I would want more options here. So I'm kind of trying to make a list of if I was to really use this plugin, how, how would I want to change it? So, um, so, but I can set some colors here if I want. Say I want the typography to change there. Labels, very, uh, I set those. And I uh, probably don't have, I don't have red on there. Actually, I was looking at a, um, well, on the Woo sash that I attended, there was uh, a accessibility. I'm sure you've got, you guys heard, or have heard about accessibility, but she was talking about, don't use red so much because you scare people <laughs> with all that red. <laughs> so now I'm like, oh, why are they quit using red? <laughs> Okay, so a few things I've adjusted, but um, so that's okay. Then let's go back and get the rest of our stuff. Now, just remember that I don't have my uh, billing stuff to check out, so it's going to look a little different. But um, so I've got my billing details, but if I probably want to have an option for shipping, so you have your shipping as well. And normally, the way that the uh, checkout is built you have all of this in one column and you have to scroll 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 you know before you can and uh, once you go live with this they they can check and this will like 
you know, collapse. So you just get the billing info. And that's where we're going to put that. Oh, I'm sorry. I picked the wrong thing. It's not that one. It is, where's my, here it is, checkout payment. So remember, I don't have my payment stuff set up, but if I had the credit cards would show up here. So I just built my checkout form and I'm done. Done. Got it. Now, if you had a shipping, also shipping would be in here. It would all come in at the um, same time, but I don't have any of that stuff set up here. Now, so that was checkout. Let's see, what else? Go over. So kind of like that. That's a good feature that that WooLenter has that we can actually change the checkout. Because I'll have to tell you the way that I was doing it before is I would actually have to go to the actual WooCommerce template and um, get rid of the two columns. And there's actually some CSS that you can write to get rid of the two columns and reorganize that, but it, it really takes a lot. And I actually, um, I finally just kept that CSS. I, I have like snip, a snippet file and I would just bring that in whenever I needed to do that. But this is like a lifesaver. I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, oh my God. And the same for the my account page too. Now, I have a, let's see if it's going to let us do what we want to do here. I usually have a, a specific way I want to build the My Account page because who likes this? <laughs> um, which, yeah, it's 819. We definitely don't have the time because I'm too much of a perfectionist to sit here and do all that. But um, I can actually show you, I think, in here how I usually build them. And, and well, I don't build them all the same way, but this one I did a little bit different. But um, I was going to show you a couple other things. Let's see. So I'm hoping y'all get the idea of how fast you can do stuff. Well, you know how fast you can do stuff with Elementor Pro, but even in the WooCommerce pages, it's it is a lot easier to uh, build out. And uh, there's there's a whole lot of other plugins that work with Elementor that could be introduced. I'm actually going to show you a couple of things um, here in the live production side, if you want to call it. Um, but I'm going to go, let's see, show you here. So on their site, I mean, this, the left hand screen, um, excuse me, the left hand, left side bar. <laughs> um, these are all done with Crockle Block. Uh, these are called jet, jet filters. So there's a price range filter. Um, you, know, you can slide it and you'll see how the price range will change based on what you select it. Um, I do find, I do find that sometimes it was a little finicky, but once I got used to it, let's see, just because I got used to it doesn't mean that the customers got are familiar with how to use this. So I'm, I'm working with my client to try to put some instructions on here. Because you notice that like once I select something, I've got to where they can remove the filter, but most people have scrolled, so they don't see the remove filter all the time. So you got to think about those usability things sometimes. So we're trying to come up with some text to teach people how to use this. Um, so I filter a category showing accessories, and this was the other thing that we learned. Well, a lot of people will check accessories and then they'll check furniture. Well, <laughs> they're going to get both. They're going to get the whole accessory category plus the furniture. So, so you've got to, we've got to tell people how to use this because it doesn't always work how you think it should. So if I just want to see glass kilns, now that's what I needed to do was just select glass kiln. Um, I this is using the Elementor skin, the custom skin. 
So I built all that using the custom skin. I know they use a lot of black, but their colors are black and red. <laughs> I mean, so their logo is black and red. <laughs> um, let's see, what else was I gonna show? I showed you the pods, but there was something particular I'm gonna show you. Oh, okay, so actually, let me show you where all of that information, how I customized. So a, a lot of times people who are working with WooCommerce are wondering, well, can I have more than one product, you know, product page? And the answer is yes, you can make as many product pages as you need. You just gotta be able to let them know how that's going to work. So this is actually, I have two product pages here, one for the kilns and one for what we call the parts, parts numbers. And all the kilns are set up because of all that information. Remember that special information I showed you? It has all their specifications. So that's where all this detail goes. So that's where it's coming in. And it's actually set up to, if, it, if the um, content is empty, it doesn't show. So it's using a visibility um, uh, plugin, excuse me. It's using a dynamic content to actually show and hide different information. Um, again, you know, if there's parts, different information. So that's a kiln. And then you'll notice that if I just pick a regular part, like just one of these things, maybe let's just look at this. So this is a regular part, and you notice none of that information is there. It's just, just the information that we need for parts. So, um, so those are two different. And as much as I love Elementor Pro, I actually had to pull in, uh, it's called Anywhere Elementor. I don't know if you guys have heard of that or used it, but Anywhere Elementor actually allowed me to go a little bit deeper because I had to be able to capture every one of the pods fields. I didn't, I couldn't pull them all in at once. I wanted just individual pods fields. So what I did was, um, so here's the, the kilns. Oh, sorry, takes so long. So with Anywhere Elementor, it's a, almost really easy to work with because you tell it, okay, what kind of template you're going to be building? Well, this is a post template. So, but you have a whole lot, of, you know, even the block layout, that's where you're doing the, the um, custom scan, that's the block layout. Uh, and then you tell it what kind of post type you're using. And then I can even use a specific product if I want to, like, Sometimes I, I'm looking at, uh, like I had to do something customized with a different product. So I was able to, you can choose any product you want to, to use as your template. And um, you know, if you're gonna use the full width or not. And then one last thing that you have to do is, um, well not really here, but, and I'll go back and show you in the product where you see this, where they're actually gonna choose the template. But let me show you in here where the a lot of the dynamic content because this is actually all built on dynamic content and there's there's a plugin called dynamic content <laughs> um and it's it's built for elementor so i use i use a lot of different stuff and i'll go to the plugins page to show you and you're going to probably die when you see how many plugins I have, but again, this is a big project. And uh, I usually have a limit on how many plugins I wanna use, but sometimes you can't help it. <laughs> I, I try to be really streamlined and try not to use things unless I need them. And, uh, and with CrocoBlock too, there's a way you can turn things on and off. If you're not using all of everything in there, you can turn specific, some of the elements off 
and um, and I did that with both dynamic content and Crocker block. I, I would only turn on what I needed to use. That helps with your load times too. Okay. So I get this too. This I don't know if you guys get this. I keep thinking it's freaking load times, but sometimes this sits here. Right? I'm like, what the hell? But um, it'll catch up. I don't know why it does that sometimes. I and I actually I will tell you all of this started after 3.0. I'm not blaming 3.0, but all of this started when I I started seeing stuff, just little quirks your here memory, and there. Your memory allocation, like your PHP uh, any file, have you checked any of that stuff? So I, I had to raise mine. Well, yeah, actually. I always do that at the beginning of projects. I like, always I like, have, like like raise mine like way high, like yeah, like way high. Yeah, way high. <laughs> yeah. Know, and a lot of, they have like thirty written down in there, and mine's like you know three thousand. Thousand, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, okay. Yeah, and I a lot of times I just resolve this by just hitting re the refresh button, and it'll. Bet you to do that if you if you got something in there you haven't changed on your screen though. You know what I mean? Like you, I've, I've had to do that today. I was making edits and I had to do that and I refreshed and I lost what my changes. So, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to do that while you have all those changes sitting there waiting. Yeah, but um, was 25 minutes, it looked like it was hung. So I just had to do it. Yeah. yeah. While this is loading, let me go back to um, this to show you something else that I did. Uh, so I think of. Uh, quote the the quote thing reminded me of this so you notice on um on these this these are uh kind of customized you know per depending on what kind of kiln the customer ordered so every one of them are different now right now they're all laid out individually we're going to be changing that because I told them, you don't want to have, you just need to put variations in there. They didn't know what variations was. So I'm like, hey, you're listing these things. So what their requirement was is that they did not want a customer ordering these, they're called elements. They didn't want the customer ordering the elements without checking with them first because they wanted to make sure the element matched the kiln that they owned. So I'm thinking, well, how? <laughs> What the hell? What do I have to keep a customer from buying something? <laughs> what do you? So, so what we did is um, instead of doing the quote thing, is I, I had them come in and they filled. They have to fill out this form. So, they have to complete the inquiry form to order. So, in, they'll come in, put their information in. We ask for their kiln. Their kiln. All the kilns have a serial number on it and um, then they have to submit it. Then this obviously goes in and then um, you know they check everything and then they complete the order. Now to me that's that's like um, the you know one more step the customer has to go through but apparently their customers don't mind because they're very um, I guess hands-on with their customers so the customers don't mind something like this but they're also a company that hasn't done any online sales until I built this. So they're, they're real excited that they actually get to. And one of the things that really bothers me is that we have to have, well, their old website still on there because they have so many things that we don't have on here yet. We just did like a launch program first and decided what we wanted to put on the launch, which was in July is when we launched it. And um, and then kind of, I'm still pulling things from the old website. So the old website had to be available for, you know, things that we couldn't get on the new website. But um, so this was a special thing that that we did, and I think there was, I don't have it in my notes, but I think there was one more thing, and I couldn't remember it, so that's why it's not in my notes. But I did a lot of customization like this, and it was, and you'll notice that. Um, let me actually go like to electrical parts here. There's, um, so that's still using the same template. That's where I was going. It's still using the same template, 
like if I go back to this, I get the add to cart button. I'm still using the same template, everything is still there, but I had to, you know, be able to pull in certain things and I did all that using anywhere. Oh my God, it still didn't load. This is where things I, I just think, okay, I have too many things on my screen. Actually, yes, let me just start closing things down. <laughs> um, it's going again. Let's see. I kind of wanted to show you where that dynamic content works, how that works, and then I'm almost done. Da -da -da -da. Oh, and I wanted to show you the square post. Come on. Okay. This just isn't working for me. Uh, Mike, do you have some questions while I'm trying to get back to normal? <laughs> yeah, actually, we do have a few out here. And just everybody knows it's 830. So if you do have to duck out, that's fine. Understand. Uh, we're going to stand a little longer, though, because we've got some good stuff here. So if you do want to stick around, please do. I'm going to post for those that do have to leave. I'm going to post in there. Um, for our Slack group, if you want to join that, there's a link out there for the Chicago Elementor Slack group. If you want to jump in, please fill out the form. Also, if you could please provide uh, feedback for the meetup. Uh, I will also be sending these out uh, through email tomorrow to everybody. So everybody who registered for the Zoom here, um, you'll get a blind copy email of some notes, uh, some plugins I wrote down that Sharon went over along with some of these forms here as well. Okay, so for questions, um, there was a question, uh, do you find Wu is capable of handling stores with two, 2,000 to 10,000 SKUs? It can be. Um, again, it's gonna depend on the server. You wanna have a good hosting company for that. And, and that won't be cheap. So, um, and that was one of the reasons why I went with Pantheon, knowing how many products this company had. Um, I went with Pantheon because I research. Oh, I know I researched WP Engine, and I didn't know about Nexus at that time when I was making this decision. Um, but I let's see. Oh, a flywheel, and um, there was one other. But I I ended up settling with Pantheon because they had the environment that I wanted to work with. And um, I was going to see if I have my, my dashboard up. Was uh, Liquid Web, Web one of them? Uh, yeah, Liquid Web, yes. Okay. Um, so here's the environment that I, I work in. Notice that I have a dev, a task, and a live. Um, obviously, you start out on dev. But with WooCommerce, here's the special thing about WooCommerce. Once you launch it, so I'm, I'm live now, so I'm launched. You are, you have to be aware that you're receiving orders. So, so you don't want to overwrite any orders by pushing your dev up to your live content. <laughs> so you have to do it in reverse. So, um, so like now when we're bringing new products in, it goes to the live site. So new products and, and your customers are making purchases all on the live site. So you don't want to lose that data so everything from the live site goes back down, trickles down to back to dev. So it, 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 again, it's one of those things, if you've worked in the enterprise environment, you understand this and it's just something you know. Um, you do all of your coding. So products you think of as content and um, just like you're doing a blog post or whatever, it's a new, new blog post, it's a new product. So that's going to go into the live site. Whereas your coding and your, when you're building stuff or whatever, you do that on dev and you push it up. So your content, you bring down and you push up all your coding. So again, it's, it's thinking a little differently because when we're just working with WordPress, oh, I'm doing a blog post and blah, 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 blah boom, it's, it's live, but it's a little bit different when, when you're working with something that has live data. So you have to think about these things when you're getting involved with um, working with WooCommerce and what kind of server you're gonna work with. Yeah, absolutely, good, good answer. 
Okay, good. Um, uh, two questions here that are kind of the same, basically. One that just popped up and one from earlier. Uh, what plugins are you typically using with WooCommerce? Okay, well, yeah, let's just go there. Since <laughs> Again, that's going to depend on the project. Um, and if the plugins do what I want it to do. Um, <clears throat> uh, Again, I try to streamline everything. I don't like just adding plugins to be adding plugins. Of course, you know, depending on if they cost anything too, you know, I, I'm real conscious about spending the customer's money. Um, so I, I don't want to do that unless I have to. And, um, and that's kind of hard, I guess, when you're, when you're trying to figure out the cost of your project, because obviously you don't want to pay for all the plugins. And, um, you know, how do you know what plugins you're going to use for a project? Well, again, you have to be able to ask all these questions and um, knowing how, how you're going to build that, what do I need to build it? And, um, you know, okay, what's going to happen if I, I find out, oh, I need another plugin and I didn't bill my client for that. Well, you've got to be able to write that into your contract. <laughs> so there's a lot of things that you have to think about in advance as well as the short term of putting that quote together. So there's quite, so I can't really answer the question, well, how many plugins do you use? I try to use as minimal as possible, but um, you'll, WooCommerce specific in this project, if you look, I've got, I've got a uh, B2B King, that's, uh, that's something for B2B, you know, business to business. It's, uh, that's where we're working with their distributors. So. So um, it's kind of customizing your customers. Um, so we've got a role for customers, just regular customers. And we have a role for distributors. And um, so distributors get a different price setting. And so I'm able to set that up all through B2B King. Um, cart weight, every, remember earlier I told you that the shipping was based on how much weight so all their shipping is done per weight. Um, so I had to be able to calculate the cart weight at checkout. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that was another problem we ran into in case some of their products came in with no weight to it. Well, if the product didn't have a weight, it caused an error at the checkout because you couldn't check out because <laughs> you didn't have any weight. So, so we had to make sure that, hey, put all, put all your weights in because <laughs> If a customer gets that and they get an error, they can't check out. So um, let's see, uh, CIO Custom Fields works with um, pods. So um, I wouldn't call a pods a WooCommerce thing. It's actually custom fields, but you know, I there's this plugin called Disable WooCommerce Bloat. I think you saw, let me go back over here. Oh, wait a minute. Um, when WooCommerce is installed, you get these analytics and marketing. Um, sometimes it's, it's a lot of stuff that you don't need. I mean, basically you get by. Well, since I had so much on this, this particular website, I wanted to get rid of as much bloat as I would as necessary. So I use this plugin to get rid of, notice that I don't have the analytics and marketing over here because we use something else for their marketing and the analytics um they since their inventory and, and customers were already on a system there was no reason for them to look at analytics on this side so i could get rid of a lot of that bloat uh let's see that's an elementor plug-in dynamic conditions in elementor um, but if i scroll down you can see all the woocommerce ones i did let's see can't see it. um Jetpack, I'm um, sorry, not Jetpack, Jet Smart filters, and I think I used Jet, uh, Jet, Jetpack is not Croco Blog. Jet Smart filters, yeah, I used, oh, sorry, I thought, I did, originally I had two Jet, two Croco Block items that I like, the filters and the search, but I couldn't use the Jet Search because, um, I had to search, I had to be able to search two, two websites. So the way that we built this, they have a, they have a, um, 
Um, <laughs> corporate, sorry, I was trying to think of the word. <laughs> they have a corporate site, which is just paragonweb.com. Uh, and then the shop side is shop.paragonweb. So I've just been showing y'all the shop side. Because, um, so I divided everything up into the two because I wanted to keep just WooCommerce by itself. I didn't want to um, interfere it with what was going on on the customers on the corporate website. It's like, you know, their team members, their careers and stuff like that. And a lot, and they have a lot of support materials too. So um, I made the decision to separate them and build separately. So because of the fact that I knew I was going to be using a lot of plugins on the WooCommerce side, um, but I couldn't use the Jet Search because now I have two, two separate websites. Well, Jet Search um, was, you know, it only searches the, web, the one website. So I had to go and use the Google, um, oh, I always forget the name of that, but it's a Google search. And you can actually program Google pro programmable. Oh my God, I can't even talk anymore. Google programmable, programmable uh, search, GPS. <laughs> um, you can actually program it to, uh, you can put the domains that you want it to search and you can take it off of public, you know, um, Google, like the whole entire web. It will search the entire web if you don't take it off of there and, um, and ads. So, you know, once you learn to work with that, so, so the search on here is definitely very um, strong, but, you ha you had to learn how to customize it, and that was another learning curve for me because I never used that before. Um, <clears throat> so, so the plugins back to the plugins. Sorry. So that's that's the Croco Block thing. And I I liked Croco Block, um, but I I wouldn't use Croco Block. They Croco Block has a Woo builder in it in its set of tools. And I tried, I tried it before, but I didn't like it. It, um, it would always give me problems too, especially in the theme builder. And I just don't have that much patience to tell somebody your product's broke. <laughs> so so I, I just move on. If I can't get what I want and um, use it, I use just the tools that I know work. So um, let's see, we had to do sorting and recaptcha because they were getting a bunch of spam so i had to add recaptcha in there um so under woocommerce we've had i've had to use attribute swatches checkout add-ons that's the we our checkout add-ons we had to use some special things like um if it was a kiln order there's a possibility that they need to answer questions so i had to actually customized checkout before they checked out okay if they if they're ordering a kiln okay they have to answer do i need home delivery do i need a lift gate do i need so there are spe specific questions they need to answer in order for that customer to check out with a kiln so again you've got to ask questions <laughs> um let's see uh coupon customer order coupon s work fedex shipping uh google analytics Pay, trace, pay, pay, um, purchase order, WooCommerce services, shipment tracking. Now that one, I have to say, I may take off because they don't even use the shipping, shipment tracking on this side. It's all done on their side of things. So I don't even know why I put shipment tracking here. They don't use it. Uh, the tree table rate, the use my shipper, and uh, I think that's about it. The oh. WooCommerce catalog mode, that was something that was, that's the one with the drop down questions that I had to add in there. So um, now a lot of this stuff you're seeing plugins, but some there, some of the customization was done using PHP in, in the, my functions. So it just depends, depends on to me, whether or not I can do it with some PHP coding or if there's a plugin for it and I don't have to code. So that's, again, you have to know. And 
with this customer, not everything came out when I was doing my scope. So you're going to miss some things. You're going to eat some money sometimes <laughs> and you're going to miss some things by asking those questions, but you just learn, you know, you learn. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now the last thing, <laughs> um, you probably have some more questions, but let me just, cause I know I'm everybody sure wants to just, uh, there's just one other one that might be quick. He, uh, he asked if you can do the, cause I know elementor forms now has the steps. Um, it was asked if you could do the, the steps in the checkout page. With the forms. Oh, um, well, but the checkout page is using a WooCommerce form. It's not an right. Elementor form. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, <laughs> well, actually you could, um, you could write the, uh, you could write that in a PHP function if you wanted to do that. I think I actually did that like on my scuba club page. Um, cause I think I did do steps, but I wrote, I had to write that specifically. Mm -hmm. um, Possible just more advanced, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's about it. There's some other out there. Um, I'll get a copy of the chat and then I can send you if you want to look through it later. Um, if you want to reply to more, but, um, yeah, for the most part, I think we got everything on the chat. Okay. So the last thing I wanted to leave with everybody was my six step WordPress WooCommerce update process. Because when you add WooCommerce into the mix, it's not a simple update anymore. <laughs> so, and I'll write these up. I, I didn't have time to do a special sheet for you, but I'll write these up for you and send them to you if you want. But step one, you make a full backup of your website. Who doesn't do that? <laughs> Um, then you update the third party plugins that are out of date and the third party plugins are anything, you know, like anything from Elementor to, to, um, you know, whatever third party plugins, they're all third party plugins. Um, then you move to WooCommerce, but you don't do the WooCommerce update. You just do the WooCommerce plugins and extensions. So anything that you purchase. You know, like the ones that I showed you, the WooCommerce uh, services, payment gateway, all of those, you update those next. Then you go to the WooCommerce and you update to the latest staple version. Then you update your WordPress to the current version. Notice that I didn't update WordPress until after I updated WooCommerce. So you get all of your plugins basically updated all the way through WooCommerce, and then you do your WordPress update. And then if there's a theme update, that you do your theme update last. So those are my six steps. <laughs> and that's it. Those are great, yeah, thank you. I'm sorry I went over, I- <laughs> Oh no, no, it was good stuff. I think a lot of people stuck around, so obviously um, you, you kept people engaged. Great job, it was awesome. So somebody says, do you find it's better for clients to use the traditional WP interface or Elementor to add? Part? Well, you don't, okay. Let me finish the question. Mm -hmm. WP interface or Elementor to add products, modify their site, et cetera. Okay, first of all, you don't use Elementor to add your products. Um, uh, your products are all added in that product section. It's not, it has nothing to do with Elementor. It's all WooCommerce. Um, I think what you mean. And once you have your templates built, like your single product template and everything, your shop and your archive, once you have that built, you don't have to worry about it. You add a new product, it's automatically going to show up. Okay. As long as you've got it categorized and showing up and what you're showing on those pages. I think, I hope everybody understands that. <clears throat> um, And if you're, if you're deciding whether or not to do the traditional interface, I mean, the WP interface, that's, unless you want to build a front end, which I think that, well, I think there's a plug in for that, but unless you want to build a whole front end for them to add their products, um, have them use the WP interface. And um, that's part of training. If you, you know, if you're used to training, do you prefer using elements or global styles over traditional theater? Oh yeah. Well, yes. I love, I love the fact that Elementor finally came up with that 
uh, the more in-depth one that we have. Um, I, I, because I've been born, I guess born as a hard coder, I, before I left the corporate world, I was a CSS expert. So I would prefer CSS almost over everything. But now that, now that I um, kind of work on my own and in WordPress a lot, I tend to try to use as much of the Elementor stuff unless I really need to make some CSS. So I, if it worse comes to worse, that's when I use CSS. I don't use it just because I like, you know, I'm an expert in CSS. <laughs> and where do I keep it? I, I keep it in that custom CSS area on under the customized section. I don't, the one thing I don't do is put it in the individual widgets. Um, I see a lot of people do that, but then that causes a lot of issues if you have to remember where it is. So that's why I keep everything in that main, it's like a main CSS file, so keep it there. And you can actually add your own, I mean, if you don't want to keep it in that custom CSS, you can add, um, I think it's called simplified CSS, the plugin, where, and I've done that before too. Um, where do you keep, modify their pages, product? product sales papers. I'm not sure I know what that. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure what the end of that means. Modify their pages and product sales pages. Um, Casey, if you want to jump on and ask your question, you can come off mute. Hey, uh, sorry. Yeah, no, we just have some clients that will be in sales pages, they'll be in their blog posts that are integrated into their shopping cart or whatever. Um, and just they have surprisingly to me had more trouble dealing with like putting in new blog posts or modifying their sales pages, things like that with the Elementor form, especially getting, you know, things to look right when you're dealing with uh, text and stuff between the text box on the left and the text box on the page versus whatever. And if they just throw it in the traditional, uh, you know, WordPress, content area it seems like they can just kind of copy and paste it in there but i'm just i'm just wondering if there's a, a better way to, to go about that just because like i said they, my clients have had a harder time actually dealing with elementor when they're trying to update stuff um where they yeah, where, specifically probably blog posts i think and, and just like i said like sales pages really yeah uh, i guess it really hasn't haven't really come up with the products i don't know why i said that really but uh, it's more for like just if they have you know most of the sites we deal with with e-commerce and, and elementor it's they're very small product bases you know it's usually manufacturers so they only have like you know five to 20 products um but they're in there changing other things about their site all the time so they sometimes have a harder time getting into the elementor pages and wanting to make changes uh, than i think they maybe did before mm -hmm. um so my first question is were they trained to use Elementor? Well, for about an hour. <laughs> you know, when we give them the site, we kind of, we have a, a training session we go over with them and that usually follows up with a lot more phone calls, but. Right. Yeah, I've even thought about doing a complete front end, but yeah, I've been told by the senior developers that would be a major pain to keep up with, so. Yeah. Um, so that that's a hard question to answer because Training, training is usually the best thing to do, but not everyone catches on. And normally it's the people that, it's the people that don't catch on who's doing the updates <laughs> or, or trying to do the updates. Right. Um, so. I may, I, be able to, I may be able to interject here, Sharon, to help you okay. out. Um, yeah. So uh casey what what i would recommend is, i mean there's really two ways you can go about it number one is i don't know if you offer care plans where yeah, you know, that's what it's gonna say <laughs> yeah if you're you're offering ongoing maintenance for them you know then you're charging them monthly you you could include training with that yeah. um or b your other option would be to create training courses um that you know create videos where you're teaching you know just a basic use of elementor and how to use it um yeah but on top of that, if you don't have time to do that, Elementor has a ton of YouTube videos and a ton of, uh, of things out there that you can provide for them. Just find the right things that you need. Um, otherwise, I, I mean, you know, it, it could be another service that you could offer to, to yeah. you know, do that ongoing maintenance plan, that care plan. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that's what I was leading up to, and I didn't want to just come out and say that. So uh, when I run into clients that are going to screw up my work, <laughs> and when I find out that, that they can't catch on, or at least catch on with what we've trained them to do, uh, I, I usually approach them. If they, they always get it, or I always include an offer of my maintenance care plan. Um, but you know, not everybody always buys it. But um, I usually, that's a way to approach your clients, say, hey, I noticed that so-and-so is having a hard time with this. I do offer this in my care plan. You know, um, I, I think in my care plan, depending on what level, there's a couple of hours included, well, um, per month, you know, for updates and changes or whatever. Uh, so you wanna definitely figure out, do you wanna spend your time doing stuff like that? Or, you know, what, how do you want to handle that? You could find somebody, you could still offer a care plan and find somebody to do that, you know, just to uh, get somebody more experienced to do that. But, and that's what I do. I, I don't, I just, I, I, I sell the care plan, but I have somebody else that does the work. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Not that I see. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. And again, I'm sorry I went over time. <laughs> no, no, good stuff. Thanks. Um, a round of applause for a virtual round of applause for Sharon tonight. Awesome job, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, appreciate you being here with us. Um, and then Sharon is uh, Elementor Dallas, so she's she's a part of the uh, Dallas Elementor group. So I, I think you can find my meetup. Looks like I just looked you up. Looks like you meet on Tuesdays. Is that right? Um, yeah. Yeah, next Tuesday, as a matter of fact. <laughs> cool. Yeah, great. Yeah, so if anybody, I mean, we're all virtual now, so you can you can be in Dallas one night, Chicago the next. So take advantage, um, whatever way you can. You got some good stuff tonight, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, Tuesday will be great as well. So Sharon, Definitely. thanks for joining us. And if you feel free to join us again anytime. Um, sure. You can travel to Chicago on the second Wednesday of the month, anytime you want. <laughs> great. Yeah, thanks. Good, yeah. Steve, Steve's still clapping. Thanks, Steve. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right and then again everybody um make sure to uh and and share you as well if you want to join our slack group feel, feel free to fill out the form i can uh throw you on our slack group chicago elementor we're just getting it started so it's it's pretty new and then um also if you want to uh provide some feedback for everybody you know do that that feedback link there i will email everybody i've got some good notes here from today just uh not not necessarily everything but i do have some notes on some plugins that were mentioned that you may want to check out. And, um, and then Sharon, if you have anything you want me to relay to all the users that joined tonight, or all the people that joined tonight, please send it my way and I could, I could forward that along as well. Sure. I'll, I'll probably make up those, that little end of the thing and add to that if I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excellent. Okay, thank Great. you. Well, thanks everybody again for attending. We'll be meeting again the second uh, Wednesday in November. Our topic is to be determined. So if you are interested in presenting or, um, and you'll see right there on the Slack form, uh, please let me know. Uh, so I'm looking for presenters for the next couple of meetups. I wanna get some, uh, some stuff out there. So please let me know. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, um, let us know. Very good. All right. All right, thanks everybody. Have a good night. Thanks Sharon. Thank you. Bye.